In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step for editing a video podcast in Final Cut on your Mac. First, hopefully you record it on a platform like Riverside where you get individual video and audio recordings for every guest. Here I'll jump into a recent podcast episode that we recorded and I can download the high quality video and raw uncompressed audio file for each participant. I can also select download all so I just get all the files at once. Now if I look in the downloads folder here on my Mac, I'll see I have a separate video and audio track for each participant. Here's my video track of just myself and I have my audio here and then the video track of my co-host and his audio separately as well. Now we're going to import these files into Final Cut and get ready to edit. Here in Final Cut, I'm going to go up to File, New, and choose Event. And maybe I'll name this event the name of the podcast. If you know what resolution you were recording with in Riverside, which you can do up to 4K there, you can choose your 4K and 30 frames per second, or you can just choose Automatic Settings, and choosing Automatic Settings, Final Cut will set the timeline resolution and frame rate to the first video clip you drop into the timeline. I'm going to choose 4K at 2997 and click OK. Here in my new event called Movies on the Side, I'm going to choose to import all the media from that folder that I downloaded from Riverside. I like to keep all of my audio and video files collected in my Final Cut library, so I'm going to choose Copy to Library here in the Files section. You can also choose to organize your files more either from tags you've put in your Mac Finder or folders that you've named with these files. You can also choose to pre-analyze the video and audio, but I'll leave all of that unchecked and I'll click Import Selected down here at the bottom. Before I start editing these files, I want to make sure they're fully imported. So I'm going to click this progress wheel up at the top left corner, and you'll see the progress for importing media. Once it's finished importing, we're ready to start editing. I'm going to go up to File, New, and create a new project. Here was the project created. Here I've renamed my project Episode 1, and now we're ready to start editing. Now I could just pull in the two video files from me and my co-host. I'll drag the first one down into the timeline, and it automatically snaps to the beginning. I can choose my co-host video, and now I have both videos of me and my co-host here in the timeline and in sync. Because Riverside keeps everything in sync, these two video files will be the same length. Now if I want to achieve that side-by-side -side look you see in many video podcasts, I can manually edit this by selecting the first video, the one on top, then going over to the Transform panel. You'll see that here in the Audio, Coloring, and, and Video tools in the upper right-hand corner. I can move his video over to the left, and then go down to Crop, and I can choose to crop his video. This way it splits the screen in half. Then I can select my video, click and drag the X position for mine, move that over to the right, and now you have a side-by-side -side podcast with the two of us talking. And you could just end it there. You have your side-by-side -side podcast, Riverside recorded everything in high quality, and you can export it. But let's go a little further and see what other options we have for laying out our videos and using that uncompressed wave audio file, which is higher quality audio, than what's directly attached to the video file. First, you can use third-party plugins to achieve that side-by-side -side layout automatically. If I go down here to my effects panel, I'll scroll down and go to this Slice Pop effects panel. These are third-party plugins that were purchased separately, and I'll link in the video description if you'd like to try some of these. Slice Pop has many different effects for laying out video, and you'll see here there's even a left-right side-by-side -side option. They also have layouts for up to three, four, five, and more videos. So if you have four people on a podcast and you'd like them all in small windows separately, or you have even five and you'd like to lay it out differently, they have lots of different layout options, really good for video podcasting. We'll just choose the simple left-right layout, and all I do is click and drag this effect on top of the video and let go of the mouse button. Now that effect has been applied to my co-host video. I'll go and click and drag it one more time onto my video, and now you'll see I disappeared from the preview. To fix this, I can go up into the Effects panel up here, you'll see the left, right, and in Zone Selection, I click that number and choose 2, and that places me on the right side. And now we're side by side for the entire length of the podcast, and there's even a nice white border to separate us. You can change the color of that border, or choose to remove it completely if you'd like. Now what if you'd like to use the uncompressed wave audio file from Riverside with the video? For that, we're going to use a multicam clip. I'm going to delete everything in the timeline for right now, and I'll go up here to my file browser, and I'm going to select my video and my raw audio file, which was that uncompressed WAV file. Right-click those two highlighted files and select New Multicam Clip. I'll title this with my name. Make sure you check this box, Use Audio for Synchronization, and then click OK. Now it will make a multicam clip where I can choose that audio and my video whenever I edit it in the timeline. Now here's the new multicam clip that was just created. I can double click and see both my video and my audio here in one track. 
On the left side, I can select which track I want to use for the audio. I'm going to click this little speaker icon here on the WAV file and deselect it here on the video file. That means it will use this audio. And just to identify it easier later, I'm going to click the title of this file and rename it Steven Wave, and I'll rename the video track Steven Video. I'll do the same thing with my co-host audio and video track. Select them both, choose new multicam clip, and I'll call it Nate Track. Now that that's been created, I'll double click the Nate Track, rename it Nate Video, and this one Nate Audio, and make sure I select the speaker icon on the audio track I want to use. Now I'll double click my project file up here, and I'm ready to drag these multicam clips into the timeline. I'll select Nate's, drag it down, and then myself and drag it on top, just like I did before. But now that these are multicam clips, I can right click each clip and choose the video angle and audio angle I want to use. Now I want to use that WAV file for the audio because it's higher quality, and so I'll choose my WAV file, and then right click his track, audio angle, choose his audio, and now I'm using the uncompressed WAV audio here for the video podcast. I'm going to drag my left-right plugin on both of these tracks as well, choose angle two, and now I have my side-by-side -side podcast using the uncompressed wave audio file laid out just how I like. Now you might need to make adjustments to the audio of each track, maybe an equalizer or adjusting the volume. Now you can do that inside each multicam clip and it will affect the entire project, even if you've made edits like cutting and splicing. To edit my audio, I'm going to double click my track here and we go back into the multicam editor. Now I'll select my audio and it's pretty low because I was using the Shure SM7B. Now with that audio selected, I can go up here to the top right in the audio settings, and I'm gonna check this box that says loudness. It will analyze the audio and try to raise the volume, and then I can increase the percentage here to make sure I get enough volume throughout the podcast. And if that's not enough, I can actually jump into some of the audio effects and filters that are down here in the effects panel, and I can grab a compressor effect, drag that on top of my audio, and you'll see that's raised the volume even more and evened it out. If you'd like to learn more about audio effects like equalizers and compressors, check out this video above or in the description. Now that that audio is looking better, I'll go back to the full recording and you'll see it displayed here in the waveform, again, much closer to my co-host. Now, when you need to make edits to your podcast, maybe you need to cut out a section where there was silence or someone had to get up for a moment, you could edit both of these tracks individually, making the same cuts on both, but I would recommend combining these into a compound clip. Then you just have to make one cut and you're done. To do that, I'm gonna select both of these tracks, right click them, and choose new compound clip. When I do that, I can choose to title this compound clip. I'll just leave the title as is. And now I have one video file with both of us together using our good audio from the uncompressed WAV files, and any edits I make will apply across all those tracks. You'll see in this section, there was actually a time when my co-host had to get up, and so I need to cut this out. To do that, I can hit the letter B on the keyboard and open the blade tool, or an even faster way to edit this is hitting the letter R on the keyboard, and that goes to the Range tool. Now I can click and drag a portion of the track, and I could tell right here is when we get back into it. And with that section highlighted, I can hit the Delete key on the keyboard, and it deletes that section of the track quickly, and I didn't have to make individual cuts. And it applied to both of our tracks. Now I can go through and edit out any other segments in this one compound clip file, and I don't have to make changes to each individual track. Using a compound clip with all of your video and audio files together is much faster at editing a video podcast. And the great part is, if you ever need to make additional edits to the audio for either host or the video, I can double click this compound clip, and now you'll see our individual multicam clips are laid out. I can edit these, or I can double click again, go into the multicam clip, and adjust the audio settings or video settings for each track. And any adjustments I make in the video panel here, the audio or coloring, this will apply to the complete project. So I can make these edits even after I've deleted sections of the podcast like here, and those edits will apply everywhere. And you can also do this with three, four, or even more guests that you've recorded with Riverside. Now let's say you wanna add an intro or outro to this video podcast. Let me import a video file that I've created before, this little intro video. And now that clip is here in my file browser. I can just click and drag that down into the timeline before my compound clip. I'll zoom in so we can see it. And now that intro will play before the video podcast begins. I can also add a transition so it fades from the intro to the video podcast. 
To do that, I'll click the Transitions tab down here in the bottom right hand corner, and you'll see a cross dissolve right here at the top. I'll click and drag that between the intro and my video clip. I can click Create Transition if you see this little pop-up, and now it will fade right into my video podcast. Now when you're finished editing and you're ready to export, let's go up to the Share button here in the top right hand corner, and your settings may be different, so let's choose Add Destination. For Add Destination, we want to choose Export File, so I'll click and drag that here into the left sidebar. Click that, and we have a few settings here. We do want to export video and audio. And for video codec, let's choose H.264. This is widely compatible and a good format to upload to something like YouTube or Spotify video. You can choose to preview it in QuickTime or just save the file to your computer only. And we can click the title of this to rename it our video podcast settings. I'll X out of this window, click the share button one more time, and choose video podcast. I can name the file again here, review my settings, and that's all I really have to adjust. So I'll hit next. It'll open the finder window so you can choose where you want to save this file, and then click save. And that will export a finished video file ready for you to upload to YouTube or Spotify video of your edited podcast. If you have any questions about editing your video podcast in Final Cut, drop them in the comments below. We'd love to answer you in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Riverside channel. And if you need help building a video podcast setup or getting audio gear for your video podcast, we have videos on that too. Links are in this description. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.